All right, everybody. Uh, we are going to talk about another aspect of our neotriadic transformations here. And it's sort of a, a thing that I think at first is going to seem like it's adding complication to this because the it, it's not actually teaching us a new idea. Instead, this is a tool that we can use to help us make something that we're already doing even more uh, sort of clear to us. And so the first thing to get out of the way, we're not learning any new transformations right now, right? We already know about our P transformations, right? Minor to major or major to minor. We know about L, we, right? we know about the relative. And we know, of course, about slide, right? One of those great transformations. So we know about all of those. We're not adding anything new. Instead, we're gonna learn about a sort of uh, a tool that we can use to see these more clearly. And let me explain, let me sort of show why we might want to be able to see these a little more clearly. And it has to do with our assignment that we're gonna do. So we're gonna use, we're gonna work on this assignment. It's a worksheet that says uh, building triadic transformations. And essentially, I'm giving you, like you can see down here, I'm giving you some chords. Like this is a four chord thing. But I'm leaving one blank and you're gonna need to add one triad to complete the progression. So let's look at the example that I've built up here. I started us out on E minor, and I used an L transformation to get us to C major, right? The leading tone transformation. B is the leading tone of C, right? There's our transformation. We've got this empty measure here, and then I'm saying we need to end on an E flat triad. So we need to find a triad that can use a P, L, R, or S transformation to get between C and E flat. So really it needs two transformations. It needs one to go here from C to the mystery chord, and then a second one from the mystery chord to E flat. So one chord, but it's gonna have two transformations. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can just use your knowledge of this chord and you can know that, okay, from C, there's one chord that's a P transformation, one chord that's an L, one that's an R, and one that's an SOA, and you can try all of them and see if any of those then will move smoothly to E flat, right? And you can do that and you can come up with the right answer like I did over here. Like you can find, okay, E minor, leading tone to C, awesome. And then we could do, oh, a parallel from C to C minor, and then I could use a relative relationship or an, or an R transformation from C minor to E flat, right? And doing that, I could create a really cool piece. Here's C, here comes C minor, and here comes my R to E flat. And the beauty of that is that what's the relationship from E flat to E minor? What's that relationship? It's an S, it's a slide from E flat to E minor. So this one creates actually a nice cool four chord loop. So that's super fun, super fun. But what if we don't wanna have to do it that way? I wish there was a, a technique that we could use. And there is, and it's uh, this word right down here. We need to use what's called a, or we can use what's called a tonitz. Tonitz is German for tone network. And again, this is gonna seem like it's sort of an extra complication that we're adding to this. But I hope you'll see that this actually makes seeing these relationships even more clear. So let me pull up, uh, let me pull up a tonitz for us here uh, and see if we can get a look. So hopefully we're seeing the tonitz right now. Um, and so this should look like it's kind of a whole uh, crazy thing. Um, but really, this is a super helpful way for us to to compare these elements. So let's try to figure out what we've got going on here because there's actually a ton of information uh, on the screen here. First and foremost, the big thing that I really want to point out is that it's color-coded between major and minor triads. I'm not sure if you can see because my, my face might be covering it. You never know until I look at these in the end. But the blue squares are minor, right? So if I sort of look here, this is sort of our big example. So these three notes, A, C, E, 
make a minor triad. So basically what we're doing is we're taking these triangles and the three notes on, on the edges of them become the triad. So like here's A, C, E, right? That's A minor. So any of the blue triangles, like let's look at this one, F, A flat, C, that makes a minor triad. Let's go down here. Here's some crazy ones. D sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp, F sharp, A sharp. That's a minor triad. So all the blue triangles are minor triads. Then let's look at our most red one here. This red one, look, C, E, G. So red are major triads, right? So all the red triangles through this whole thing are uh, major triads. Now, you can sort of see that, like I said, these two are the deepest colors of the red and blue. Um, that's just so that we can easily find C major and A minor, the two most sort of central triads. The rest of them are kind of faded. And then you can see it sort of goes downwards another level of fade. This is this is just because, look, it's, I think, pretty clear to see what's going on here. So we've got, we'll use here. Like, this is B flat, D flat, F. That's sort of a, you know, B flat minor, fairly straightforward. It's got B flats and D flats, but you know, it's still a straightforward kind of triad. As soon as we shift out into the less colorful region here, we've got B double flat, D flat, F flat, right? So we go into the funky note area. So we can sort of see over here, like look, let's look at this one. This is C sharp, E, G sharp. Since it's blue, we know it's minor and C sharp minor. At the second we go out here, we've got C sharp, E sharp, G, and B sharp is over here, right? All the crazy notes are out there in the less colorful thing. So that's sort of the first step to navigating it. All the triangles are triads, and we can see the three notes. Like, so let's look here. We've got E flat, G, B flat. And since it's red, we know it's major, right? If we had done C, E flat, G, that's blue, that's minor. So that's sort of the starting point. But the beauty of how this is laid out is that it perfectly demonstrates our transformations for us. Because if we look in the bottom left corner here, we can see that, look, the way that the triangles intersect with one another shows us what a P, L, R, and then hiding up here, S relationship would be. So let's start here. Let's use C major, C, E, G, right? So we've got our nice C major triad. Now, this little map or legend thing down here is trying to tell us, look, C major, it's red. It's a downwards triangle. If we just flip up to the top, that will be a P relationship. That'll be a parallel transformation. So here's C major again, C, E, G. If I just flip up, what do you know? C. E flat G. That's my parallel relationship. Cool. Let's do C major again. Here's C E G. Cool. What about let's do an L relationship? So if I went down to the right, right, use this sort of this part of the triangle as my axis, that's going to be a leading tone relationship. So first, before we even look, what's a leading tone? What chord shares a leading tone relationship or transformation with C major? Try to think about that. Here's our C, E, G. So now we said we're going down to the right. And look what we get. E, G, B. That's our leading tone relationship. So look, we traded C and B. The beauty of this is, look, we can see which notes are the common tones. E and G are the common tones between C major and E minor in that L relationship. Are you starting to see how this can help us out? Let's do the last one. If we start with C major, the red triangle, and go down to the left, we're going to get that R relationship. What chord is the R relationship away from C major? Hope you know it's A minor. So here's C, E, G. If I go down to the left, I get A, C, E. Right? That's my... Uh, relative, my R transformation there. So this is really useful for seeing all these relationships because not only does it, you know, sort of put the close chords together, but we can also see what the common tones are. 
Everything's there. Let's do the last one. Let's do the slide. Here we've got our slide. It says if we take the tip, if we take the tip of the triangle and go across that, that'll give us our slide. So here's C E G. We already went up left and right, so now we're gonna need to find the tip of the triangle. Here it is. And we cascade around here and get, look, C sharp, E, G sharp. That's the slide, right? The third stays the same, and it switches from major to minor with the same third. So the tonnets is a really, really helpful tool, kind of like the circle of fifths. Yes, you can do it in your head, and yes, you, it's important to know how it works, but sometimes it's really nice just to have it visually represented. The thing that I like so much about this is with the color coding and with the sort of really nice representation that from one chord you can see really easily what's next door. So something that's worth pointing out just because I think it can be um, it can be hard to see this sometimes is that the more the distance you get from the central really straightforward chords like C E G, there's only really one C E G on here unless we get crazy spelling. Um, but if you look, for instance, uh, I didn't think this out ahead of time, but let's look here. B, D sharp, F sharp, right? B, D sharp, F sharp. We can see here that if we try to do the slide on B, D sharp, F sharp at the tip here, right? We'd go across to, oh, goodness gracious. B, we've got B sharp, D sharp, and F double sharp. Well, that's just pure craziness. The beauty is that a lot of these triads are actually multiple spots on here. So here's B, D sharp, F sharp. Look up here. I've got C flat, B, E flat, D sharp, G flat, which is F sharp. And so look, let's do the slide from here. Oh, that's a lot more straightforward. C, E flat, G is a lot better than B sharp, D sharp, F double sharp. So. This is where you have to be okay and open to those enharmonic respellings to see some of this. So let's go back and look at that example again and see if we can sort of find, uh, find the answer a little bit more straightforward. So we said we've got C and we need to get to E flat across this mystery gap here. C to E flat major. So let's go to the tonnets and let's look for C major and then let's look for E flat major and see what we get. Here's C major, C, E, G, right? Can we find where E flat major is? Sometimes you gotta do a little searching, but it helps to know what the notes are in it, so there's a G in it, look, and here it is, E flat, G, B flat. So here's C major, here's E flat major. We need to get between these two chords and so look, we can see, oh, we just need to go right here to there, from C major to C minor, which since it goes on the long axis here, of it goes up uh, at the long axis of the uh, triangle, it's a parallel relationship, right? So you remember over here, parallel, C, E, G, C, E, flat, G, and then look, we can use an R relationship from C minor to E flat major, right? So the tonnets contains all of these relationships in there. And as you do this assignment, I think you're gonna find it a lot easier to use the tonnets to find the path in these progressions than it would be to just try to figure it out on your own. Yes, you can do it, but no reason not to use the tools that are there for you. So use the tonnets, try to build these progressions, and uh, I think you'll find that it's a really useful tool as you uh, learn to build progressions using these techniques.